Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is representation theory. Today's topic is the weirdest topic in representation theory ever, um, semi-simplicity. Why is it weird? Because there will be a miracle, which I find so surprising that I call it the finite group miracle. Um, warning, I'm the only one who calls it the finite group miracle probably. But anyway, um, at the end, you, you can decide yourself whether you agree it's actually a miracle or not. Uh, but it's certainly somehow weird. And it's a property you should not expect from any type of object you study, any type of representations you study. And it still does happen in some cases like finite groups, not just for finite groups, also for other nicely behaved cases. Um, but in general, it's just so false. And I personally find it's really surprising because if you look at it, then I mean, it, it's really no way that this is true, but it actually is. So let's just jump into it and let's, well, you could decide at the end whether you also call it a miracle or not. But it's kind of the, the point why representation theory of finite groups is so nice and so smooth is that everything is semi-simple. That's kind of what it, what it will turn out in the end. Okay, so let me show you an example. And I can't really show you this example because it doesn't quite fit on the slide, but it's not so hard. So um, a natural representation of any group is just let it act on itself. Right? So it could always act with anything on itself. It's uh, the natural representation on itself. Uh, in order to make it linear, you just act on the group ring. This is just a vector space. It's more than a vector space. It's a ring or an algebra actually, but let's think of it as a vector space where the basis elements are just group elements. That's it. Basis elements are group elements and you can act on it by just multiplication. Right? So that's how you can act on itself. Um, I will explain this picture now, so here in S3, um, so S3 is a symmetric group on one, two, three. So just all permutations of one, two, three. It has six elements, um, their identity. So you don't permute it all. The one, two. So one, two is a permutation of one and two. Uh, two, three is a permutation of two and three, and so on. So one, two, three pulls strand one to two, strand two to three, and strand three to one, and so on. So these are the six elements here, and these are my basis elements. So I just label the columns and the rows of a matrix uh, by those elements. And every element, now it's very confusing because it acts on itself. So you have the basis is made of group elements, but the actors, the, the things that act are also group elements. Anyway, so the one that act here in this example um, is one, three, two, and it gives me a six by six matrix as follows. So one, three, two times the identity what is it? One, three, two times identity is one, three, two. So I just write down this vector here, which picks out one, three, two. I hope it makes sense. It's the image of the identity on the left action by one, three, two. So let's check one more. And I hope uh, then I have done my homework and the rest of the matrix is actually correct. Uh, so one, three, two on one, two. So how does it work? So one, three, two on one, two. Well, you just read it. So one goes to three, three goes to nothing. So I write down one goes to three. Uh, let's see, let's three goes to two, two goes to one. So three goes to one, uh, two goes to one, uh, one goes to two, so two is fixed. So I get this element one, three. And indeed I wrote down uh, one in the entry one, three and so on. So we get this huge six by six matrix and because it's six by six, it also doesn't quite fit on the slide but it's really, really not hard. You just read off the action of the group on itself. And this representation is a really important representation in general for any group and it's called the regular representation. And the miracle I'm describing in this video happens for uh, the ground ring. So this works for any field or for any ring or whatever you want, it always works. But the miracle happens if you do this over the complex numbers and you need the complex numbers here just a matter of warning, because what you do is in the end, you calculate characteristic polynomials in a very sophisticated way. And you would like to know the roots and the root in general uh, complex numbers. So um, if you would be a lover of the theory, you could actually also, or you don't like complex numbers, you could also actually work over the algebraic closure of Q if you would like to, but you certainly need some roots, some roots of polynomials to make it work. So in those cases, a miracle will happen and the miracle is the following. Um, so we still act on itself. So here I was a matrix from before. 
and a simultaneous base change which works for all of those six six by six matrices. Right, say it again. Your six six by six matrices is not so trivial and absolutely not clear why you should be able to do a base change such that all of them get this nice block form. And really all of them do. I have another example on the second slide. So you get this nice block form of a green representation of a red representation, it apparently appears twice and of a purple representation. And you might complain now the purple looks like the green. Uh, give it a few seconds on the next slide, you'll see the purple is not the green. But the point is you can do a simultaneous base change on all of them. And this works for any group, which is huge. You get a, a huge matrix, you get lots of huge matrices. You can do a simultaneous base change on them such that all matrices, all action matrices take this nice block form. That's already a miracle. That's not quite clear why that should happen. A simultaneous base change on potentially huge matrices and not just uh, potentially huge, but also potentially quite a few matrices. And that's kind of really a miracle already. But it gets better, it gets even better. It's so beautiful, it gets even better. So um, here is, I, on this slide, I put the simultaneous base change for two different elements. And you can actually see that my purple one is really not the green one. So the green one is a trivial representation and the purple one is a sign. Uh, so it's a sign representation. But anyway, you get the same pattern. You have the, the two by two blocks here in the middle and um, the, the trivial, the green one and the sign, the purple one. And they have names. So the red one is called standard. The green one, as I said, is called trivial and the purple one is called the sign representation. You can actually find them here um, by base change in this regular representations, in this uh, action of S3 acting on itself. And you have this miraculous formula. It's really a miracle. So al already, it's already a miracle that you find those blocks because you have a lot of matrices and they're huge, but there's another miracle. Uh, and it's this decomposition, uh, decomposition into direct sums. So direct sums here just mean to find blocks. And you have this following counting miracle a one dimensional block appears once. So trivial appears once. A uh, one dimensional block appears once. So sign appears once. And a two dimensional block will appear two times. So two dimensional block appears two times. And indeed, it happens, right? And you get this funny formula in this case. So this should be uh, S3, not a general group, of course. So in general, you get this, the, the formula here. One squared, so uh, plus two squared plus one squared equals the order of the group. And the reason you need to take squares is because, well, those things, they appear as often as that I mentioned. So you actually need to take squares. So in general, the miracle, the absolute miracle, here you can see it, it's kind of, kind of literally see it, but this is true in general. The absolute miracle here, G is semi-simple over the complex numbers. What does this mean? Well, this means the following. It's the absolute miracle. So every G representation is completely reducible. So you can always find a decomposition, um, in this case, a finite decomposition, because I'm talking about finite dimensional representations into simple representations, a direct sum decomposition. This is this block property of those um, representations. You can simultaneously find a block form of all matrices. You can find these simple representations. Now that's already a miracle, miracle part one. Miracle part two, this is so beautiful. It, it just gets better and better. Miracle part two is all simple representations appear in this decomposition. And the decomposition actually looks like this. So uh, the module, the group ring, so the action of the group on itself decomposes into all symbols and each symbol appear as often as that I mentioned. So this was this picture here. And what I'm also saying is, and this is not quite clear from this picture, that's why I'm highlighting it, it's not quite clear here, but actually you get all simple representations. You don't even miss any. So um, the simple representations in this case of S3 are those three. And you know it because you can comp compute this decomposition, this matrix decomposition um, for those six by six matrices. Say it again, this is crazy, right? So all representations appear, all simple ones, and they appear as often as that I mentioned. Really, really strange, really, really a miracle. And uh, from this formula, you get the third miracle um, let's maybe do the black miracle, namely the order of the group is always given by this nice formula, uh, the sum of the dimensions of the simple squared. So again, you need to, to square it because of this property. Uh, let me just write it down 
for three factors, then you understand immediately why, why you square it. Let's say you have a dimension three thing and you need to, so it appears three times because it's dimension three. So if this is dimension three, you have three, 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 and you have it three times. So you have three squared actually objects here. And that's why you need to square the dimensions. So the, the miraculous formula here, <laughs> crazy, is the order of the group is always the sum of the squares of the simple representations. And this is just amazing. It's really, really amazing. And works in more generality, which I'm not going to cover here, but I've written it down here. A miracle, a miracle, the finite group miracle. That's why I call it the finite group miracle. There's no reason a priori why this is supposed to happen. And of course, if you go to the wrong uh, field or the wrong objects you want to study uh, representations, you're wrong in huge quotation marks here, of course, then this is not true anymore. So this really is a rare property which explains that kind of why finite group theory is so popular, uh, representation theory of finite groups is so popular because it's way easier than you would expect it to be. It's just so super beautiful. It's amazing. Um, as you can see, as you can hear, I'm certainly a fanboy. Uh, maybe you're a uh, fan as well now. And this is weird. This is really weird and surprising. So let me stress that. So representation theory, that was kind of the analogy I wanted to play, uh, corresponds to something like matter. The simples correspond to the elements and the indecomposables correspond to the compounds. So the indecomposables are the ones you pick up when you do direct sums. And the semi-simplicity tells you that simple needs to be indecomposable because you just pick up direct sums. That's, and the direct sums are the simples. In general, direct sums should be indecomposable by definition but they are simple in this case. So semi-simplicity is kind of the same as simple equals indecomposable. Or in my picture upstairs, uh, elements equal compounds. <laughs> it's just, I mean, come on, that's just weird, right? I mean, I find this, I find this really weird. Uh, obviously that's not true, they are not trivial compounds, uh, but in the semi-simple case, the finite group miracle, those two notions agree. So they are only uh, non, they're only, sorry, trivial compounds and their elements themselves. So this is really, really strange. There are no non-trivial compounds. Um, this is <laughs> no non-trivial. This is just saying they are only trivial compounds. Anyway, um, and this is, I mean, this is really, really weird and surprising and something really special is going on. And in general, this, there's no way that this is true. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video and my kind of slightly strange analogy here that I'm trying to, I hope that analogy works for you, like uh, matter and indecomposable versus simple and um, kind of these type of uh, analogies and the finite group miracle then it happens where, well, elements equal compounds. Um, anyway, I also hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.